Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're going to be cutting, pairing and fitting the tenons for the entire door frame. Let's get going. Right, so in the last episode, we got all the gauge lines, the shoulder lines and the stuff, I don't know, all the other things marked out. And I've quickly taken the time to scribble out the areas that are due to be removed so I don't cut out the wrong area. And I've sharpened a three quarter inch chisel, which should be able to do everything on this joint. And aside from that, all we need is a dovetail saw and a mallet. So this is what the end grain looks like now that I've scribbled out the areas we're going to be removing. So the cheeks are going to be disappearing and this little area for the haunch is going to be disappearing as well. Now a potential difficulty with this is when you start cutting on that end grain the saw might end up slipping into that groove. So what I'd suggest doing here is actually tilting the piece away from you like that. And so when you're looking at it you're going to be starting on the corner like that and you'll be able to see if you're tracking down this line here and that line at the top there. And you will have a little bit of potential to start steering it as you go as well, especially if you work with a flexible saw like a Japanese saw. And so I'm just gonna pinch on the end grain like that and then use the tips of my fingers to get the placement of the saw correct side to side. And I'm probably gonna end up cutting about half a millimeter to a millimeter away from the line. So just take out the corner, check where I am. I can see that's gonna leave me with a tiny bit of material to clean up afterwards which is perfect. So we'll complete this cut first. All right, so we're down to the line here and we've hit the corner there. So now we just flatten it out, get the saw into that existing cut line, just tilt it back a bit and then finish it off. And that's now gonna follow the path of least resistance and track the line down the back here. And like I said, you've got a little bit more flexibility when it comes to using a Japanese saw because of that flexible blade. I'll show you how. If you're finding it hard to track both those lines at once, I would encourage you to flatten out the piece even further and just focus on hitting one of the lines first because you can, if I just get this locked in, you can essentially bend the saw to start tracking that line. So if I notice it's beginning to track into the line, I just angle it this way a bit and it's gonna start pulling it away. Likewise, I can angle it in and get it locked into that one. So now that line's established, we'll then go to the top. Now I'm gonna to start on the side closest to me here. But again, because you're not locked into anything down this side, you've got a lot of room to start steering, as long as you keep this cut line nice and shallow. So as I was cutting there, I was just lifting the saw up, and we track that line all the way across now. So we'll just make it a tiny bit deeper. And then, with a line tracked along the top and down here. The saw, once again, is gonna follow the path of least resistance. So we can put it in there and pretty much, like you don't even need to watch what you're doing. It's just gonna do the work for you. Down to the lines, get it upright and then finish it off. You can kind of get away with using that technique with a Western style push saw, but that thicker plate just makes it a little bit less versatile. But of course, by all means, just give it a go. And you may remember in the last lesson, I said, don't bother drawing the tenon on the side. This is why, it's because it's gonna be cut off. And so I'm gonna leave about half a millimeter once again, to the shoulder line so we can chisel it up later. There goes all our marking. All right, and then depending on how close you cut to the line, you might have some of these flaky bits to break off either side of the groove. Don't force them off if they're really hanging on because you might end up splitting it into the groove or something. Like that one would probably be pushing it. So I'm gonna leave that for when I chisel it off. The ones that are paper thin, you might as well just remove them. They're all good. Right, so now we've got two types of lines to get back to. We've got the shoulder line on here, which we need to chisel down to, and we've got the lines that have been scratched along the edge here to dictate the thickness of the tenon. And I prefer doing the shoulder lines first because when you chisel down, it creates a subtle cut in the timber along here, which means that when you pair it this way, the fibers are already detached here, which means they peel away a lot easier. 
If you do this one first, the fibers are technically still attached in this corner and it becomes a little bit pinchy in a way. So shoulders first, that'll sever the fibers. And then we'll come in from this direction and this direction using those lines that we scratched over the top in order to get that thickness bang on. And so this shouldn't need much explaining by this point. Standard practice, carefully work your way back to those shoulder lines without taking off too much material in one chop because if you do so, the chisel's gonna get pushed below the line, you'll get a really choppy surface. That's why I like using a nice wide chisel like this, because that wider bearing surface on the back prevents it from being pushed as much. And you obviously get more progress done with each cut. There is one area on here, however, that you've gotta be quite careful with, and it's this grooved area. You see with here, if we're chiseling down, then we've got the actual tenon to support the end grain. But as soon as we get out here, there's nothing underneath that end grain stopping it from blowing out. And it won't be too visible, but if the panel was in there, you might end up getting some sort of weird splintering or something. And so what I suggest doing is working down like this on the area above the tenon, and then with this area, work in from the edge like that. And so in practice, it would look like this. Up in the vise, tap it down while tracking the shoulder line on the front. And then we've hit the tenon break all that off. And so now that shoulder line's sorted, we lay it flat and we go in like this. And make sure to give it some firm taps when it hits the tenon, because remember you need to sever those fibers before we start pairing. So do the end grain, hit the tenon, firm chop afterwards. Not too hard though. And so this, that one with the funky bit, I didn't really want to break off. And so this is the time to do it. I'm not quite in the shoulder line yet, but we'll just tap down like that. There we go, that'll break off. And now into the shoulder line. That's basically it. All right, so next we're gonna start working on the marking gauge line scratched over the end grain here and the ones scratched down the top. And because I'm half a millimetre away from the line, I'm gonna put my chisel into that line on the end grain and just give it a few taps to separate it. That's it, that's all we're doing. If I was to chisel that all the way down, then it may start tracking the grain and it would probably end up going in a direction we don't want it to. So all we're doing at the moment is deepening those lines. And then I've got the one on the front here. Just gonna lock the chisel into that. Carefully pair that forward. Little twist and separate that material. And now with the material separated here, this material separated on the end, we can just focus on carefully pairing across. And so effectively, all you've got to do now is remove this stuff in the middle without touching any of these outside corners. Now we don't have a line on the back edge here because there was a groove there. So we've got to kind of eyeball that and that's where I'm using the end grain here as a reference because I know that that's straight. And just get it to a point where it's pretty nicely cleaned up on both sides. So now the only two lines that we've got to get back to is the haunch and the height of the tenon, I suppose, which is scratched on the end grain there. So we'll do the haunch first. I'm gonna cut about half a millimeter away from the line. And obviously I don't have anything on this side to show how deep I'm going. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I could draw it on, but I don't think I need to. As long as I get it in the ballpark. And then for this one, because it's gonna be completely hidden within the mortise and I'm not too worried about that choppy edge potentially left with the saw, I'm just gonna cut directly to the line, but on the waist side. And again, I am just eyeballing vertical. You could redraw it on there if you want. But there we go. And so now I've just gotta clean up that little bit left over on the haunch, because I didn't cut directly to that line. So chisel in there and then tap it down vertical. And then we'll see what we've been left with. So D going into D. Ooh. Okay, so it's starting off really nicely, but because we lacked those lines when we were cleaning up the thickness of the tenon, then it's got a little bit tight side to side. So what I'd do here is just scribble a little bit of pencil on the side of the tenon. I would avoid doing it around the haunch area just in case it smudges out and becomes visible on that join on the top of the door. Just keep it around the tenon for now because that's the only area that's gonna be tight and then try reinsert it. Oh, oh, it's going in this time. Okay, it's a little bit tight. Let's have a look and see where that's rubbing. 
So this side looks pretty good. Not really any smudges to be seen on that whatsoever. This side, definitely a little bit of glazing going on in some areas. Really not much at all though. All right, so that's as far as I've managed to get it in by this point. And this is a pretty common sight with a lot of joints, to be honest. But with this, there's two causes that I could think of that would be most likely. The first one is that the haunch isn't descending perpendicular to the edge of the material, and therefore it's bottoming out at the bottom of the haunch before the top. Or on the other hand, it could be very simple in that the tenon is just slightly too long, or you need to chamfer the corners because they're currently catching on something at the bottom of the mortise. And so I've checked the haunch, I can see it's not that, so I reckon it's just gonna be either chamfering it, which I'll try first. Just do that very carefully with the chisel. Okay, so it's a little bit closer, not quite there though, so I'm gonna take a tiny bit off the length of the tenon. And because I've chamfered it, I shouldn't need to worry about any breakout on the opposite side. Just go straight off. And there it is. So with a little bit of clamping force, that will completely close up. And that dark line you're seeing at the moment is just a very, very small step creating a shadow. So once that's planed off, that'll be a lovely joint. And so that fit, where it's just a nice, friction fit like that but when you swing it there's not a chance it's coming out that is achieved from accurate marking out above all sharp tools and um, just attention to detail I suppose so I'm going to finish off the remaining three and then I'll show you the finished result Right, and there you go, just like that. The frame now fits within the cavity. Or, I mean, it's a very, very snug fit, but we're gonna be planing that down to achieve an even shadow gap around the outside afterwards. But so that's pretty much what you're going for at this point. If you can get it just to sit in there, happy days, we'll sort it all out later. So in the next episode, we'll be sorting out the panel for that door. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and move on to the next lesson by clicking the link below. I'll see you there.